ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineup for the Toon Squad. And now, the player coach of the Toon Squad, at six foot six from North Carolina, is Royal Airness, Michael George. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. I have another weird custom for you in this video. In normal times, we have a flea market, which is a traveling flea market, and it comes to my area once every three months. The last one that I went to was at the end of February in 2020, before everything got put on lockdown. While I was there, I came across another Mickey Pop vinyl. This is what I found. I picked them up for $4. As I've mentioned previously on this channel, these aren't worth anything. And this particular one, I can't find anywhere. I've even looked it up on eBay. Judging by the style of it, I would say it's probably 1960s or maybe early 1970s. Again, this is something that you could either probably find at most retail stores like a Woolworth, or this is something that you would have seen at Disneyland or Disney World. I don't believe it's bootleg because it does look a lot like Mickey Mouse. However, these could have been made by a third party. Call this the original Funko Pop because this is a pop vinyl. This one also is not in the best condition. He's missing his plunger at the bottom, which is, would keep the coins from falling out. His head is not attached very securely. The head moves, but I wouldn't twist it too far, otherwise it's gonna pop off. Some of the paint is rubbing off, and he's very sticky. I think it's the plastics that are breaking down. So I have a very weird custom that I'm gonna do for this today. I don't even know how I got this idea. I think I mixed two different themes. On a recent thrift store excursion, I came across the two disc special edition of Space Jam. Believe it or not, I had never seen it before. This movie came out when I was a senior in high school and I thought it was a movie for babies. Yes, I love Michael Jordan just like everyone else did, but I wasn't really keen on watching Michael Jordan interact with Looney Tunes characters. I mean, Michael Jordan in the 90s was practically everywhere. One of the things that I came into the realization of while watching the movie is that the Looney Tune characters don't really come into play all that much. The movie is all about Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan's skills. So honestly, the Looney Tune characters could have been anything. I love Looney Tune just as much as the next guy, but coming across this piece and the scale of it, I had a wacky idea of what would the licensing agreement been like if it was Disney characters instead of Looney Tune characters. And my customization today is gonna be turning this Mickey into a member of the Toon Squad and I'm gonna make a diorama. Yes, I know it sounds bizarre, but bear with me here. I think this Mickey can be customized to give him some Nike shoes. I think I can uh, make these jeans a little bit more 90s and I can convert his shirt into something reminiscent of what they wore during the movie. I think quarantine has gotten to my brain, but I do have a couple cool ideas for this. So let's get painting. I washed this guy completely off camera in warm soapy water and then let him dry. And now I'm using my Centelier Acrylics Black to just give a once over on his head. I'm actually doing multiple coats here. Boom. I said that I wasn't gonna remove this head, but I kind of have to. Now I'm gonna make a jersey for him. The jerseys in Space Jam are all white. I need to get rid of this red. As you can imagine, it takes a number of coats to cover the red completely, three or four in total.
Now, obviously, it doesn't quite look like a jersey. We're going to try to make something look faintly reminiscent of a jersey, even though this is a polo. Now that the shirt is dry, I can work on the arms and I'm just going to do one or two passes of black. The great thing about these jeans is that they are actually baggy, which baggy was all the rage in the 1990s. Just applying a coat of some really dark blue, I can kind of get the same look of say a Janko jean or something along those lines. And being able to see a little bit of the underneath tone gives it a bit of a stone washed effect. Now I'm going to make the mini Jordans. These shoes are big and bulbous, but I think I can get something reminiscent of the Jordans that Michael wore during the movie. They still reproduce these shoes and I'm following a photo from the movie. Now I'm going to tape off so I can do the white sole. And the satisfying tape removal. Now I'm painting the gray grip guard. We're going to get a close approximation. They're not going to be a direct reference to the actual shoe, but I think the end result will be something remarkable. Now I'm taking a toothpick and I'm going to draw the jump man. It's going to be hard to see with the blue on the black. Just knowing it's there is fun. And I'm using a metallic Sharpie marker to get the lines that are on the back of the sneakers in the movie. The head is actually in pretty good condition aside from the nose and the ears. I am just going to touch up a bit of the white around his eyes. And then a little bit of his tongue. But otherwise, again, the head was in pretty decent shape. Now I just headed on over to the friendly Google and downloaded a couple Toon Squad logos, high res images that I found. And I just put them on a Word doc. I'm gonna cut out the one that I think is gonna be able to fit his jersey the closest. And here's the tricky part. I actually have to measure and cut around his hand here. This is super awkward. You can actually see my head. I'm up in on this, trying to get as close to it as I can. I use my X-Acto blade and I am actually really impressed with these results. It looks pretty cool. It actually fits great. Now just to get some Elmer's glue all and I'm going to brush lightly on the back of this to create a sticker. And this is just regular printer paper, nothing fancy. And once this is firmly in place, I will then take a layer of Mod Podge matte finish and lightly brush over the top. This will actually seal it in and get rid of any of those bubbles. And at the end, I will actually spray this in a sealer. I've got this great set of Posca paint pens.
I'm just going to use them to draw the red and blue thread accents that you can see on the jersey around the neck, around the collar. I'm not going to do it around the sleeves, but I'm going to do it around the lining of his waist. And I decided that I wanted to differentiate the hand from the rest of the body. So I'm using a fine liner to give it a more of a cartoon effect. And I don't show the entire process. Now I'm gonna make the base. And this is just a cheap bit of wood and polystyrene tube. For what you might ask, well, you will see in a moment. I am just lining it up so I can drill a hole. And now I'm using a stone Krylon paint. This took about four or five coats. It looks a lot like concrete and untaping. And I found this really flimsy, cheap sport basketball backboard at the grocery store. And it comes with this ball. I'm just gonna give it a coat of paint around the outside just to mask off that wood finish. Now the goal is to mount this backboard using the polystyrene rod. Unfortunately, I think I should have gone with a dowel rod. This thing actually is a little bit too flimsy for what I really need it for. But right now I'm going to attach it using some wire. I have to cut some holes in this backboard. The backboard display itself is just simply for fun. I am not going to attach Mickey to it. I just thought it would be kind of fun to make on camera. And I'm taking a flat polystyrene sheet to cover up this back and I'm gonna use a bit of Velcro and the sticky tacks that already comes with this backboard. And because my sheet was too large, I am now just using my X-Acto blade to trim the edges. And what you did not see on camera is I used some glue, which actually melted the polystyrene rod overnight. So I decided to use a two-part epoxy to seal it in and hopefully it will dry and cure much faster than the glue did. The glue needs to set overnight and I think having it wait that long is what melted it. This is quick acting resin, so this should seal within 10 minutes at the most. And now I'm just fitting in the backboard. You can see how wobbly it is. It's not the best. Again, I probably should have used a wood dowel rod. And there you go, Mickey is all ready for his street setup. All right, guys, we are back. What do you think of blue chip Mickey? He got game. I think he could fit in just as easily with the Toon Squad and run the table with MJ. Don't be afraid to roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty, get into some paint, and come up with your own custom pop vinyl. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this week, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.